Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the place we have reached tonight. We praise you for all that you have been giving unto us, all that we have been learning, all that we have been hearing. And yet you still want to feed us. You still want to reach at our hearts so that our life on earth will not be unprofitable and useless and worthless, but that at the end we may hear from your mouth, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Then can you welcome us into the eternal habitation? Lord, we are praying today that will remind us of our calling, that will remind us of the ways we ought to live and carry out the callings you have given us. And if in any way we have been going astray and we have tried to do your work, not the way you have ordained, you will call us to yourself so we can readjust, reshovel things, repent when necessary, make right our ways and start in the right way. Father, we pray that none of us will be caught up with the spirit of the last days, but will do what you want us to do in the way that it will please you. And on the last day, it will attract abundant results from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's turn to Amos chapter 7. I'm reading verses 12 and 13. Amos chapter 7, verses 12 and 13. Also Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah, and there eat bread, and prophesy there, but prophesy not again any more at Bethel, for it is the king's chapel, and it is the king's court. We're looking today at the thing that will be happening at the end of the age. And we'll see the emphasis of religious people and preachers and worshippers, at least the majority of the people, what their attitude will be and in what way ministers and preachers in the last days will be ministering. You might also see the reasons why they will be ministering, how they are ministering. I'll be talking on strange fire, itching ears, and lying wonders. Here he must have been called by Almighty God to be a prophet. Not called according to this world's standard. Because by the world's standard, he would never have been ordained, he would never have been chosen, he will never have been put into the place of ministering or preaching the word or prophesying and representing the Lord Almighty. But God, who chooses instruments of no value in the eyes of the world, and he places those instruments in charge of his great and mighty work, he chose Amos. And Amos on his own, the moment he had seen the call of God upon his life. He left everything else. He forsook everything. And he started prophesying. He said what he saw. He repeated what he heard. Without adding. Without subtracting. He preached the same message. In the suburb. As well as in the city. He preached the same message among the few as well as among many. He uttered 
everything the Lord had given him, whether he was of the lowly people who were perhaps illiterate, not well to do, when he came to the place of the king, to the chapel of the king, he said the same thing. He taught the same thing. For the prophet must only say what he has seen. And he must only utter what he has heard. And so in that way, he began to prophesy unto the people. There had been some grumbling behind Amos as to the weight, the authority of his message. And that Amos left no chance for anybody to debate and for anybody to give another side view. He said, thus says the Lord. And in giving God as a background, as the authority of what he said, he left little chance for anybody to say, but what about this? Amos will reply, this is what God said. And he left little chance for anybody to adjust and modify and try to tidy everything up and parcel it in a way to look acceptable to the king because here is Bethel. And as they have been gumbling at the back, eventually one of them said, I'll go to him. I'll tell him. I'll challenge him. And I will tell him how to preach, how not to preach. If he insists that he's going to keep on saying what he has seen, he's going to keep on uttering what he has heard from God above, we'll have to shut him up. Because those messages are hard. Three evils have I discovered, yea, four. And for these three and four evils, here comes the judgment of God against Judah, against Jerusalem, against Israel, against the leaders, against the people. That's too hard. Let's get at him. And let's show him this is not right. That's the background of what we have read in verse 12. Also, Amaziah said unto Amos, O thou seer, that means prophet, go, flee thee away into the land of Judah. There, eat bread, take care of yourself, relax. Life is too short to preach in a place where they're likely to shoot you. And I tell you that a lot of people don't like your message. Therefore, go and hide yourself there and eat bread. There, you may prophesy. <laughs> your message will be appropriate there. Verse 13. But prophesy not again anymore at Bethel. Why? It's the king's chapel. Why? It's the king's court. There are many chapels in this world, in this land, in your own community, where the true message of the word of God will not be accepted. It's the king's chapel. It's the chapel of the highly placed. It's the chapel of the people that matter. It's the chapel of the people that are significant in this world. And you cannot talk about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. You cannot talk about the sinless, spotless, holy life of Jesus Christ. You cannot emphasize the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Neither can you tell of the second coming of the Lord. That will be too much for them. It's the king's chapel. There are areas and places in this land where you cannot say the Bible is the authoritative word of God and that if you add to it, sorrows and judgment and anguish and suffering will be added unto you. They don't take that. They say, go to another place, go to the village and tell them that we don't want that here. There are chapels, there are churches, there are denominations where you cannot emphasize that the person that dies in sin, whether high or low, man or woman, the person that dies in sin 
will go to hell and live in hell fire forever and ever. They won't allow you to say that. And there are places where you cannot say, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. There are places where you cannot talk about speaking in tongues, being baptized in the Holy Ghost. There are other places where you cannot talk anytime about the fact that the Bible says it's one man, one woman, until death us do part. There are places you cannot tell them that if you divorce and you're living with another woman now, you're living in a constant, continuous, daily adultery. They won't take that. They will say, this is a king's chapel. This is a dignified church. This is a church of the people that matter. And in the church of the people that matter, you don't emphasize the word of God. It's just for social gathering, for us to come together, sing together, make business contacts, and after that, maybe recite the Lord's Prayer. After that, sing some songs while sleeping on your feet. And eventually, when you've gone through that time of that day, then go back home and do business as usual. But how about us here? Have we discovered that there are places also in deeper life, churches in deeper life, where you invite another deeper life person and uh, you say, well, have my pulpit for today. But I know the state you are coming from and I know in your state, you give it to them. Hook, line and sinker. But over here, we, we have discovered that, you know, if we're going to preach, we need to be reasonable, soft, approach the people, not drive them too hard, not give them what they cannot chew or swallow. We have discovered over here in our state that as we preach the word of God, we are to give them a little at a time. We still believe everything, but we don't preach everything we believe. We believe everything, but we don't want the people to believe we are ministers of the gospel. We know it all. But these sheep, these young people, and these well-educated, highly placed, and rich people that are just coming, they shouldn't know everything that we know. So, you have my pulpit for today, but take care. Preach, preach well. The people are looking for something that will make them happy. I told them that somebody is coming, and he's going to take my pulpit for this week. And he's also deep alive. God is using him wonderfully in his own stage. So, I told them that it's going to be a nice time, a wonderful time. So don't uh, disappoint me. Don't disappoint the people. Speak unto them smooth things. The spirit of the last days. And so they came unto Amos. And he said, Here is the king's chapel. And the whole world, the totality of the revelation from Almighty God, doesn't come out in the king's chapel. Well, let me tell you this. For those of you who may not know, and you're looking out there, you want to go and preach out there in another denomination, in another church, many, many places, and you say, they're inviting me to talk. Well, they're inviting you. But why are they inviting you? They want the total word of God. They want that holiness without no man shall see the Lord. They want the totality, the entirety, the completeness of all that you have learned, all that you have known. No. They are maintaining their king's chapel in their own way, in their own method. You know what God said after that person told Amos? Look at Amos chapter 8. From verse 11. Behold, the days come. says the Lord God that I will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of the Lord so God himself told Amos he said don't worry about it I've left the chapels for them I'm not there my power is not there my presence is not there and my word is not there they don't want the word. 
They don't want the prophecy. They don't want all the things I've shown you to give unto them. You tell them that the day is even coming when I myself, God Almighty, will send a famine in the land. I, I don't want to preach where God himself, God Almighty, has sent a famine, where God has decided they wanted to maintain their king's chapel in their own way, and they have rejected the completeness and the totality of the word of God, and leave them to their chapel, where God himself has said, I will not reveal myself unto them. I will leave their chapel for them. I do not want anybody to bundle me there and say now, come and talk to us. If God has left that place, I don't have a ministry there. But there are many people that do not know that God himself said, I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And it shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. And it shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And so we find in these last days that there are places where the word of God is completely absent. And you need to understand and you need to know that when the word of God is absent like that, the people of the world, they will try to do something. If the original word is not there, they'll get something like a counterfeit. If the reality is not there, they'll get the child. If revelation from above is not there, they'll get the revelation from the human mind. If the doctrine of Christ is not there, they'll get the doctrine of a false Christ and a false prophet. They'll preach something in 2 Timothy chapter 4. From verse 1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, they shall heed to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Paul the aged, Paul the apostle, who had confronted a lot of false brethren, and false teachings in his own day. He was about to leave. <coughs> and I was telling young Timothy, said Timothy, I charge you. I command you. I commission you. Let's stop there. There are people that will want me, I mean myself now, as the general superintendent of the church and the pastor of the church, not to give a charge, but only an advice. And he will try to say, times are changing. This is not deeper life of 1977, 78. Those days, you as the general superintendent, you could say, well, this is what to do. Fine now. But at this time, See how the church is large. See how many people have come into the church. Now you shouldn't choose that type of language anymore. Believe this. Accept this. Stand on this. Stay here. Go there. Know that age is past. The age in which they are living now is when as you come apologetically and say, brothers and sisters, this repentance before we are born again, what do you think about it? I advise you that I think if we keep on preaching repentance, that will be nice. I never do like that. Before I do that, I'll go home. I charge you. I command you. I commission you. I compel you before God Almighty. 
who has given us the authority of his word, who has given us the totality of his word, that repentance must be preached in all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Not that we're pleading with you and begging you and advising you and trying to knock heads together and say, what do you think about this? Don't you think it will still be all right to preach sanctification in our churches? No, we don't think about it. We just compel our preachers. I charge you, therefore, before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, who when he comes, he will judge the living and the dead at his appearing, that you preach the word. Jesus only, Jesus ever, is the Savior, is the Sanctifier, is the Healer, is the Baptizer, is the Coming King. We sing it every time to make sure that you understand there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. We sing it every time that you may know there is no other passport to heaven except the fact that you repent and believe the gospel. We sing it every time so that it's a reminder unto you that when you go back to your churches, the very place to start is to tell the people, except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. And then when they give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, we tell them, if any man is in Christ Jesus, is a new creature, all things are passed away, all things are become new. If you have discovered people that are born again, but they are smoking, have not discovered them. If you have discovered people that say they are saved and there is no change in their lives and they are still drinking, I have not discovered them. What I knew, what I know, what I believe is that if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away. I have not seen people that are born again and they are still lying. I have not found people that are born again and they are still committing adultery and fornication. I've not seen people that are born again and they're still hypocritical. I've not seen people that all things have passed away from their lives. Their names have got into the book of life and yet they're still cheating other people and stealing money, stealing money from their neighbors and stealing money from the church. If any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Preach the word. And we do preach that before Jesus went away, he looked up to the Father and he said, Father, I have given them your word. The world has hated them because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, sanctify them. We read in the Bible that Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, he suffered without the gate. We read in the Bible that he loved husbands, love your wives, as Christ also loved the church, that he gave himself like a sacrifice. So that he will sanctify the people that the church might be without spot, without wrinkle, without any blemish. That's the word of God that we have read. And if we have read that and studied that, preach the word. And then we are told that before he went away, he told his own disciples, Tarry ye at Jerusalem, until ye be endued with power from on high. And then he told them, when that power has come upon you, then you will be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in all Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And then there are people that are telling us today that, you know, all those experiences, you cannot still be talking about them and standing upon them because, you know, some will be sanctified, some will not be sanctified. Well, if you are sanctified yourself, you won't be able to say that. Preach the word about marriage The Jesus Christ himself said. What God therefore has joined together, let no man put asunder for this cause. He made them male and female. And then we're told, it is until death. Do us part. But now you know there are people that say, well, I'll just keep quiet about it. I won't talk about it. Because I don't want to drive all those people away from the church. That professor has two wives. That engineer has two wives. That other one, the first wife has gone, the second wife has come in. Those are the pillars in our church. God have mercy on you. If a backslider is a pillar in your church, that's your church, not his church. If a polygamist is a pillar in your church, that's your church, not his church. If the people that do not know the Bible, they do not know the ABC of Christian doctrine, if they are the pillars in your church, God have mercy on you. 
if the people that are still chewing tobacco and the people that are still drinking wine and the people that are still watching their television and the people that are still following other prostitutes and the people that are having two, three wives, if they are the pillars in your church, the Holy Ghost has left that place. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. You know what that means? Oh, people say, you know, this is rainy season. And during this time of the rainy season, if you preach something very, very strong, you know, already the rain is disturbing them to come to church. This out of season. This is not the season to talk about restitution, about sanctification, about holy living, about uh, making right your ways, and about the judgment of God. This rainy season. Already in this rainy season, we've lost a lot of people. And this is the time of austerity. For the people to even leave their houses and come to church is hard on them. So, this is not the season to preach the word. This is the season to tell story, to tell tales. You know, the cause of God comes upon the person that will take away from the word of God or add to the word of God. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove. Reprove. How do you reprove? With the word of God. With the teaching of the Bible. And then it says rebuke. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Then the apostle, aged apostle, he told young Timothy. He said, Timothy, watch my word. Take note of this. So that when it happens, you will know it is happening. He says, for the time will come. For Paul the Apostle, it was future. But he saw it like the prophets of old saw the future events that were coming. Paul the Apostle, Paul the Prophet, Paul the Evangelist, Paul the Pastor, Paul the Teacher. Paul in the office that God had placed him, he saw it coming. He said, the church will backslide apostasy will come into the church there will be a falling away and then he said at that time the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine i must tell you the fact sometimes when you have a preacher talking in this in this workers meeting like this and we're talking about faith and healing and speaking in tongues and prosperity and the goodness of the lord if you're feeling like going to the toilet, you never rise up. Oh, you say, I want to get the secret. The secret of being uh, healthy and sound. The secret of being prospered. The secret of growing my church to be very, very large. Nobody wants to stand up and go to the toilet. Begin to talk about restitution. And pinch a little bit hard on those workers. And begin to talk about your responsibility. As a child of God, as a worker, it's then they remember, I think that's the right time for me to go to the toilet. Well, if, when they're talking nice and talking things that will help me, make me achieve my goal, then I can come back. And you wonder, for pastors, who knows, for even state overseer, when the going is tough and hard, when the word of God is like a hedge armor, sledge armor, knocking everybody on the head i think state overseer would like to go to toilet i think pastors would like to go to toilet i think the house fellowship leaders would like to go to toilet if you cannot endure sound doctrine now if you are standing up like that and going up and going down like that when the going is tough when the word is hard it means if you had a chance to dictate what to preach what to say you'll cancel that thing out of the preaching but don't let that time come upon you for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears oh you see we have not done that you've done that let me ask you apart from the cassettes of deeper Christian life ministry that we have given out from the headquarters here. What other cassettes do you have? Those cassettes you have, check up on them. Are they on holiness? 
Are they on purity? Are they on Christian perfection? No. On what are they? On bread and butter? On healing? On prosperity? On motivation? On how to be happy? On how Jesus never called anybody a sinner? But Jesus just loved everybody and blessed everybody. You have itching ears. If you had your way, you also will forsake the sound doctrine. If you had your way, like you have had your way in buying whatever books you like, listening to whatever cassettes you like, look at your houses, look at what has filled your houses and your shelves. If you had your way, you will not take a word of holiness. The books of John Wesley, they are still available. Why didn't you buy them? The books of C.H. Um, Finney, uh, Charles Finney, they are still available. Why don't you get them? The people of, that believe, the people of God in past generations that believed that if you are going to remain saved, you must remain in the word of God, obedient to the word of God every time. They are still available. Why didn't you get them? Why is it? That the books of eternal security preachers, they are the one in your houses. The books of the people that will pet you and pat you and uh, just uh, pamper you, the, those books are the one in your houses. You have itching ears. Take care. You don't want sound doctrine. The word that will cut you. Do you ever get any book that you read that makes you cry? Do you ever hear any message on Kisset apart from ours that makes you to tremble and shake before the Almighty God? No, you won't spend your money on such a Kisset. But the Kisset that will cool you down and will tell you of the tensions in the last days and how you can relax, how you can laugh. And laughter is the medicine of the day and the medicine of the body. And how you'll be composed and live long on earth. You want to live long in this world. And there's nothing you are doing in this place to live long. Those are the cases you are all hustling for. Running about for. It says then, for the time will come. When they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, shall they heed to themselves. Teachers having itching ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. I told you in the morning that there are people that are not willing to endure anything. They can't endure sound doctrine. They can't endure discipline. They cannot endure hardship. They cannot endure the cross. They cannot endure persecution. They cannot endure a little misunderstanding. They cannot endure you tossing away their opinions. They want their way at all costs. That's not Christianity. That's not even being a babe. That's being a complete outcast. Not a child of God. If somebody is a child of God, it says, watch down in all things. Endure affliction. If you are still really standing by the word we're preaching, and you are preaching the word yourself, there will be enough affliction for you to endure. Enough persecution for you to endure. And it says, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. You know, sometimes meet people in our church here who say, I'm a teacher. What are you teaching? You are a teacher. Do you understand all the basic doctrines of the Bible? You are a teacher. Can you interpret and rightly divide the word of truth? You are a teacher. Are you able to stand on the totality of the word of God and teach it convincingly? And then go out in your own life and practice what you have taught convincingly. If not, you are not a teacher yet. Other people will say, I'm an evangelist. And then they go out. They're not even ordinary soul winner. Not to talk of being an evangelist. Neither can they draw people into the kingdom of God. They can make people to raise up their hands. I'm talking about bringing people into the kingdom of God by repentance and faith in Christ. Others will say, I believe I am a pastor. But they do not have the shepherd heart. But it says, whatever you are, make full proof of your ministry. 
What ministry has God given you? Show it. Show us the evidence in your life. In your church, if you are a pastor, when the people are going up and down and they're saying, no, we're not going to accept that doctrine. We're not going to accept that Bible. Now we're going to break the church in two. That's when we know whether you are a pastor or not. If you're able to stand, if you're able to endure, why people in your church, you as a pastor, while they are going behind you and they're saying, well, we're trying to bring people to the church, but since the pastor now is majoring on holiness and restitution and hell, fire, holiness or hell, take it or leave it, since that is his way of preaching now, well, we cannot evangelize anymore because really it's not helping the work. The messages are too hard. And actually, it's not the converts that are complaining the messages are hard. For they themselves, the messages are hard. When they came in, they could do restitution. But today they cannot do restitution. The messages are hard. When they came in, they understood that it's wrong for a child of God to remain in anger. Now they get angry every now and then. If you preach against anger, the messages are hard. When they came in, they were lowly. They were humble. Were you not humble in your own sight when the Lord chose you to be a king? But now pride has filled their hearts. Now when you speak against pride and you talk of being lowly and gentle and humble, the messages are hard. So really it's because of themselves. But it says, if you are really a man that God has called, it says, you'll make full proof of your ministry. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all them also that love is appearing. And so the word of God clearly states here that at the time of the end, when this age is running to a close, what you will find is that people will not stay on the word of God. They will have itching ears. But let me show you what the word of God has to say concerning what we preach, what we believe. Galatians chapter 1, from verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ unto another gospel. I marvel. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ. Now you have gone into another gospel. How many years have you spent in the church? When were you born again? When did you come into this church? Three years. You believed it before you, when you came in. You believed it for three years. Now you cannot believe it anymore. I have believed it now for more than 20 years. The same thing. That same sanctification. That same restitution. That same marriage standard. That same no divorce and remarriage. That same rapture of the church for those who are ready, those who are spotless, those who are clean. That Christ will come and take the saints, not the sinners. Take the saints, not the backsliders. Take the saints, not the tail bearers. Take the saints, not the hypocrites. Take the saints away unto himself. I've believed it now for more than 20 years. But you have believed it only for three years, only for five years, and you are tired, and you say, well, can't we change this thing a little? I don't, I don't ever think like that. I just love sanctification in the word of God. I do not want to be moved from this gospel of the grace of God into another gospel. This is the only gospel that saves. The gospel of purity. The gospel of holiness. This is the only one that gets you in the narrow way and gets you into heaven. I don't have any desire of changing anything here. Anything in the word of God is just good as it is. The word of God has been tried in the fire seven times completely and it is still perfect. Why do you want to change it? How many years have you spent in the church? Ten years? 
And now you think that because you spent 10 years in the church, you now can get in a parochial committee and say, eh, let's review this thing. What are you reviewing? It's the word of God. Before we were born, it was the word of God. Before you were born again, it was the word of God. After you became born again, it remains the word of God. Why do you want to change it? It's good as it is. It's good as it is. And you'll find that in the whole Bible, the preachers of the word of God, they were always straight forward. Think about Moses. Think about Joshua. Think about Elijah. Those were men of God that preached the word as it is. Think of Daniel. Think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Think of Isaiah. Think of Jeremiah that told the people, if you want to put me in a dungeon, well, I have no choice. But that's the word that the Lord has put in my mouth. And it is not me that has said this. They said, shut up, otherwise you will die. Oh, he said, if you want to kill me, that's all right. But know that if you kill me, you are shedding innocent blood because it wasn't me. In fact, I told the Lord, I am a child. And I'm not worthy to say any of these things. But the Lord said unto me, Say not thou, thou art a child. But ye shall say the word I put in your mouth. And then some other people went to the king. They told Zedekiah, hey, This man ought not to die. He's doing his duty. It's not his fault. It's the word that the Lord gave him that is speaking out. Now if all those people in Bible days, if they spoke the word of God as it is, why do you think that now you have the liberty not to speak the word of God as it is? I marvel then that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. How do we preach today? How did we preach before? I'm not talking about improving our English. That's all right. I'm not talking about improving the structure of the message. That's all right. I'm talking of the content of the message. The examples you used to give in your message, that it will drive the point home. That the people will go on their knees and they will cry. And they will weep. And they will say, that's a word from the Lord. And without even giving an altar call, those people will fall on their faces and they will say, be merciful unto me, a sinner. How do we preach today? So much knowledge. So much English, so much interpretation, so much illustration, so many cliches, and many, many things that we bring in until the sin has no meaning to anybody anymore. There is another gospel where the sinner will be, will be rejoicing on the seat on Sunday, on Friday, on Tuesday, whether it is Bible study or revival, our worship service, the same thing every time where the people are just rejoicing. The people come in, all their cosmetics and all their evil spirits and all their evil powers and all their, their dubious characters and all their sinful ways and all their uh, demonic practices and they go away rejoicing. If you don't do anything about it, you know I told you. Because the curse of God will come on the deceiver that sees a person going, into, going the way of hell and he refuses to point out and say, my friend, you are going the way of hell and will just, you know, put his arms around them and say, we are all right, you are all right. Come back to the church. Tell them the truth. Why are you afraid to tell the truth? If this church, deep alive, closes its mouth, is speaking the truth, where is the other church in Nigeria here that will stand on the truth? That will be a conscience for this nation. That will be a conscience for all the other churches. That will be the light. That will be the standard. That will be the yardstick for all the other churches. If we fall, if we let down the standard, if we go heaping unto ourselves teachers because we have itching ears, if we go through all the things that the people are going through and we dilute the word, water down the word, and sit the word, and give them what is useless, other churches will follow also. They are looking at us. But if they know that we are still standing on the eternal rock of ages, we are still standing on the unchanging word of God that will forsake anything and anyone, any property and any group of people, if that thing will make us or if that person will make us to compromise the word of God, they are watching us. In your state, they are watching you. 
whether you are still standing on the word of God or you are no more standing on the word of God. It says you have gone to another gospel, which is not another, but there will be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Sir, that's a generous representative. That's an apostle. That's a person that loves the word of God more than any human being. And he told the Galatians that if any other state overseer or pastor or preacher or evangelist or worker, if any other person preaches any other thing to you apart from Jesus Christ the Savior, apart from Jesus Christ the Sanctifier, Apart from Jesus Christ, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. Apart from the fact that when we come in, there is a change of life. Radiant, pure word of God coming into our lives, changing our lives, making our lives radiant and perfect and pure. Apart from that, if anybody comes in to preach any other thing that makes now Christians to be diplomatic, very, very careful and dubious, and they will cheat you methodically. And it's the teaching of the people that is doing that. If anybody comes in to preach any message that makes the children of God just like the children of the world. And then there is no demarcation, there is no difference anymore. Jesus said, they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. How come? Workers dressing like the world. How come? Workers having on their lipsticks and covering their palm air. Your leaders have been teaching you the wrong thing. They've not told you the truth. They've not told you the truth. They're deceiving you. They want to get your money. You're rich. They want to build their church on your head. And after building their church on your head, you go to hellfire. They're not telling you the truth. They don't talk to you about restitution. They told you to pay tithe. Why are they telling you to pay tithe when they have not told you to make right your way before the Lord? Those are the wolves. They want to get everything that you have, like a tin of sardine. They want to eat the sardine in you and throw the can into hellfire. They're wolves. And because of wanting money, because of wanting the things of this world, we don't preach the truth anymore. Yes, we have the title. The title is true, but the content is false. The title is challenging, but the content has no value. It doesn't convict anybody doesn't bring life into people that are dead. doesn't drive me to my knees. doesn't drive you to your knees and say, Oh Lord, look at me. I'm lost. Save me. But here it says, which is not another gospel. But there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. Though we are an angel from heaven, a Paul the apostle could bring a curse upon an angel from heaven. I don't want to hear from anybody saying that, well, an angel spoke to me, that angel is cursed. If what that angel told you is contrary to the word of the living God, that's the spirit of the Antichrist. That's a fallen angel transforming itself to an angel of light and coming to tell you that all those things we read in the Bible, they're no more true. All those things we believed before in the Bible, they're no more true. All those things we have been standing on, they're no more true. If they were not true, why did they drive me away from the church I was before? If they are not true, why have I been suffering? If they are not true, why did I suffer persecution? If it were not true, why did we travel to Nietzsche, travel to Enugu, travel to Weri, travel to Kaduna, travel to Ghana, and slept at the borders? If it were not true, why did we sleep on the beds with bugs biting us to preach that word of God? If it were not true, why did we allow all the other churches to cast our names out as evil? If it were not true, why did I suffer? If the word of God has changed, what's the reason for all the suffering we have got? I about all these women that have been waiting for their husbands because they are the second wife. And therefore they made restitution. Or because they are the first wife and they went out before and they married again. If that word of God is not true, that we must remain with the first husband. Why are we allowing these women to suffer? To take care of their children alone. To sleep alone in their houses. To fend alone and to provide for themselves alone. Why did we tell these old ladies 
who came to the church some years ago. Why did we tell them the truth and now they are staying alone? And now these other people that are just coming now, they are enjoying. These people who came long ago, they are unlucky. Now they have made restitution. Now they are praying and praying and praying and praying for the other man to come back to them. And then the people that are getting converted now, they are enjoying everything they want to enjoy in the house of the wrong marriage. That's not fair. Some are suffering. Some are living in sin. Some are enjoying sin. Why? Why are we dying? Why did we give all our money? You remember when we were the IBTC? We went to the bush together. I was a lecturer then. I had all the things I could have in the world then. Why did I suffer? Why? Why would I allow, allow my name to be announced in every church, in every congregation? The name in the mouth of the young, in the mouth of the old, and they say, that's the criminal there because I'm like Amos preaching the word of God. And now you people have come in. All the things that will lay the foundation of you just uh, scattered everything. Now you're preaching another gospel. If when I'm not dead yet, I'm still alive, I'm still young, you're preaching another gospel. What if Jesus tarries and I die and I leave you behind? You'll not preach anything. You'll not stand on anything. You'll be caught in the world, marrying the world, and being like the people of the world, preaching the same thing that all those people are preaching. Ten years in the gospel, you are changing it already. You are just like all those other churches. Go and read about the Methodist church. They were on fire long, long ago. They have changed. Go and read of the assemblies of God. They were on fire long, long ago. They have changed. Go and read of the first choir church. They were on fire long, long ago. They have changed. Go and read about all those other churches. You are going the same direction. You are going the same direction. In this whole year, you have never talked about holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You are going the same direction. This whole year, you preached more than 50 times. Tuesday, Friday, Sunday, you never spoke about hellfire. You are going the same direction. I'm telling you, like the apostle, that the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they will heap unto themselves people that have itching ears. And when they go away like that, you, Timothy, if there's any Timothy there, Timothy, if there is any Timothy there, if there's any young preacher there, who does not want to go to hell? Who does not want to have another gospel? Timothy, where are you? If there is a Timothy there, Timothy, endure affliction. Preach this word. Stand on the word of God so that if I die before you, you'll take my place. You'll preach what I preach. You'll stand on the same thing. And on my ashes, on my dead body, you will rise up and preach the word of God. Rise up and let us pray. Get on your feet. Preach the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Our gracious Father, we come before you tonight. We have heard your word. We surrender our body. We surrender our soul. We surrender our spirit. Father, Father, Father. Amen. 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 Our gracious Father, your word has come unto us. We have seen the signs and all the things that will fit us in these last days. Father in heaven, we ourselves, we are eyewitnesses to the things that are happening to many pastors, to many evangelists, and to many churches today. Today, there is no more truth anywhere. Today, there is no more the real preaching of the word of God. But Father, you have called us. You have called us, you have raised us up. That we should teach the word of God. That we should preach the message of holiness. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. We are asking 
that anything whatsoever that will want to come upon us or that are even coming upon some of us that we're no longer preaching the word of God when we're no longer staying <coughs> on the truth Father, remove it in Jesus' name remove it in Jesus' name for the apostle said that you called him to preach Christ you called him to preach the gospel and he said if we preach any other gospel let that man be a cause father we don't want to be among the accursed people we want to be people who preach the word of god we want to be people who are standing on the entirety of the bible so father i'm praying help us in jesus name help us in jesus name father we are young we have no might of our own we have no power of our own father we are young pastors without experience and many things that are dazzling in the world they're trying to charm us they're trying to take us away pastors of other churches colleagues from other churches that we know with their loose lives with their loose preachings going to america going to britain going to everywhere bringing money they are affecting us they are affecting us and we are trying to nurse what is destroying them but we have heard your words tonight wherever we are backsteering to bring us back bring us back bring us back this church this ministry is known for holiness in the good old days, we preached it in the morning. We preached it in the afternoon. We preached it in the night. We, was, we were so intoxicated with the holiness message <coughs> that even when we were talking to sinners, we told them to be holy. But today, you saw our sincerity at that time. You thought we were people who would take it to the end. Then you told us to come and start a church and then you bless your church people have come in and the very message the very word of god that made you to bless this church we are trying to throw it away father have mercy upon us father have mercy upon us and right now we are praying change our hearts change our vision change our churches change our state change our local government that father whatever it will cost us we will preach the word of god and yet today we have been challenged by your servant and he told us how many of us are going to be timothy's and father as i'm now praying those of us who are standing if you know you are going to be a Timothy, stand up. A Timothy who is taking the charge that we will not change the doctrine. We will not change the word of God. Stand up. Father, if you know you will not change the doctrine, then stand up on your feet. Father, we are standing up. As fellowship leaders, we are all standing up. Area leaders, we are all standing up. Sonar leaders, we are standing up. Coordinators, we are standing up. Women leaders, we are standing up. Pastors, we are standing up. State leaders, we are standing up. And Father, and Father, we say we are not going to change it. We are not going to change it. We are not going to change it. Help us. Help us. Help us. Help us! Help us! <coughs> Help us! And all demonic forces that have been creeping in, affecting us, affecting our, me our, our me messages, cast them out in Jesus' name! Father, we lift up our general superintendent before you. He cannot die now. He cannot die now. He cannot die now. 
Your church is young. Our ministers are young. The state of Asias are young. Father, he cannot die. So that we can be grounded with the word of God. Help us in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the message. For in Jesus' name we pray.